thank you, Rude, for joining us this afternoon. What is your history? Were you born in the Watchtower or did somebody knock on your door? What's your background? Well, my background is that my mother was interested in, in this, uh, in the Watchtower for as long as I can remember. Do you, do you uh, remember around what year, Rude? What year are we talking around? Well, I was born in 1944. And, uh, you know, in my childhood, at least from five, six years up, I heard uh, my mother was interested in the Watchtower. And she spoke about Armageddon and, and, and the New World and all that. And but we didn't. Uh, she didn't take a stand, you know. So we celebrated Christmas and everything. And I had a very good childhood. I exceptionally good childhood. I had uh, couldn't complain. And you know, and um, it was in 1958 that my mother, because of some pioneers who came, uh, and and uh, alerted her she was baptized and then in 1959 i think it that came a uh, so-called special pioneer uh, home he was a very very well outgoing and uh, well he was uh, very fascinating character so my father who had been opposed to the watchtower he agreed to a bible study that was in the autumn of, of 59, and, and uh, the entire family participated, me and my, my uh, four siblings, uh, three siblings, we were four all together. And, you know, and uh, so uh, that year, uh, it was so effective that we decided uh, that autumn not to celebrate Christmas for the first time. I always celebrated Christmas with my family before that. And uh, I was, uh, well, I was very impressed by what I learned during this study in the book, what you call Let God Be True, uh, a handbook that was used for a good many years. And uh, I decided to to join and I I was baptized in, the summer of 1959. I was 15 years at the time. Where did your career in the Watchtower go after that? What, oh, what were you an elder then? or anything like that? Your no, no, uh, no. I, I, I was never an elder. Uh, you know, in 59, I was 15. And I uh, uh, I went along with the, the organization for a number of years. Uh, but... Uh, it was in 65 when I was 21 and you know, we were to, we went to jail for refusing military service in 63. I'd served one month and in 65, I was to, I was to, to, uh, to serve uh, uh, two months in jail for refusing military service. And, uh, and I had decided when I went there and we had we had a, a, a it wasn't really a, a jail, but you know it was jail like because there were only witnesses, and we we patrolled the area to see that nobody came into there. <laughs> nobody would run away because this was such a <laughs> a privilege to 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 sit only with witnesses. Where, uh, but but I decided I, I I would go into detail of the all the doctrines so as to be able to prove our religion, uh, you know. And uh, during doing that, I got into trouble. I found things that I couldn't uh, get see support of the Bible or from the Bible. And I spoke to those uh, inmates there, and uh, they had no idea. And they did, but they didn't care. I cared, but they didn't. It couldn't. Uh, they couldn't care less if what my problems was. If there were any problems, they couldn't care less. But I did, and that was a start. Sixty-five was a start of my, 
of my uh, exodus because I decided to really go to the bottom of things. And I soon, um, I, I contacted a Baptist pastor and uh, for some reason, and uh, while well, I, I wanted to, I wanted to, to defend the witnesses, he attacked them and I wanted to defend them. But, you know, uh, he really, he, he showed me things that made me realize that he knew more about the Bible than I did. So uh, that was in 67, I think. And uh, I continued to study the Bible independently. And, uh, but I was hoping that the organization would uh, reform. There were signs of reforms, we thought. And uh, so I continued, and, uh, but I, st I wasn't keen on going from door to door. I never was. I hated going from door to door. I always did. Uh, so, and how, but, did, how, how did everybody there view you at this point? What was your reputation, your standing? Your, your... Well, I, I was in fairly good standing. I was a school servant, as it was called. I, I took care of the theocratic school. And uh, my father, well, he was, a, he was in the leadership locally. So, um, I, and I was quite outspoken uh, at the time. And I asked several people, even, even leading witnesses uh, from the headquarters or the local, or the, the national headquarters, and, uh, but, and they couldn't answer anything. And, but they seemed to tolerate me. Jeff, that, yeah. that's what, when I tell you about my background, yeah. that yeah. I, unlike many other witnesses who are just shunned, beaten away and just destroyed for whatever reason, they tolerated my comments and attitudes and, and whatever. I, I like rude. I, I can't figure out why there's a, <laughs> a, 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 a small percentage that they allow that with your oh, yeah. personal investigation. Your, now you've written a book before, also, Rudd, before this this particular project, but it's called "The Signs of the Last Days When," but you yeah. have a different name on it, Wolfgang Herbst. Wolfgang, that's German, and it's pronounced Wolfgang Herbst in German, Thank or Herbst. <laughs> and uh, I wrote that in in cooperation with Carl Olof Johnson. So, um, Carl and that Johnson was, is the one who wrote the Gentile Times Reconsidered. Yeah, yeah, he is the one, and I helped him with that too. And I'm, I'm getting, I received credit in 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 his fourth edition. Uh, I didn't get that before that because you know, because of my my father and my brother, who, who I I don't want to upset them. So, but but. In the fourth edition of the Gentile Times Reconsidered, Carl Olof gives me credit in the in his introduction so, for having been for having been with him all the time from the start. So that's why you on, didn't use your name before because of your family, your real name. Yeah, that that, that was because of my my father, my brother. Uh, it's I didn't. Not because, it's not because it translates very strangely into English. You know, rude rude person. Sounds very strange in English, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, 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 it was simply because I didn't want to uh, I, to hurt them, my father and my brother. That that, very, that was the reason I I, I used the pen name Wolfgang Herbst. And and how do you pronounce your name really in in Swedish? Well, here they would say rude. 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 Last name? Person. Person. <laughs> P E R S S O N. Not not person like with one S, but person with two S's. And that means the son of Pear, the okay. son of Peter. It's a common name. We have Person, Nilsson, Svensson, etc. And you know, it means the son of. Person is the son of pair. 
you you mentioned earlier when we had a pre-discussion that Carl Olaf Johnson was one of your best friends. Uh, for many years, he was my best friend, and then, uh, and then, uh, a number of years back, Jim Penton came in as just as close a friend as 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 as, as uh, Johnson was, and uh, they had the same feelings toward each other. Also, we were absolute close friends. Uh, but before I, I, I knew Jim Penton, uh, Carl Olaf Johnson was my best friend. And, and where is Carl today? He is living in a home with his wife, and he has an apartment. There are people, we call them good men, good man, a good man who, who arranges for, for, for people who cannot manage uh, who paid the rent, etc. And uh, Carl Olof and his wife, they are fairly well off because of Herod. They have inherited money. and But both live in a home uh, now. And uh, once in a while, uh, uh, three or four months ago, there was uh, one of our common friends visited and uh, he handed the telephone to him. So I spoke a few words with him. Nice. But uh, he he, is, he doesn't hear well either. He is only he is only eighty two years in December. It was I, I think he was eighty two years in December. It's just confirmed, as we say in Sweden. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like your sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so I mean. Uh, um, and I, I have known him since he, his late 30s. We met in 1974 at a convention in Göteborg, uh, at the Watchtower Convention, and we have been in touch ever since. Your personal investigation led you to dig deeper into things, which leads yeah. us to your new book project. 